Hello, and welcome to the On-Premise IT Roundtable, the only podcast that dares to be both on topic and on location. My name is Tom Hollingsworth, and I'm a part of Gestalt IT. Every episode, we gather the luminaries from technology to discuss a premise or an idea about some technology. And since we're here at a networking event, we have a networking premise that we'd like to debate with you today. I'd like to take a moment to introduce today's podcast guests so you get to know them a little bit better before we introduce today's premise. Tom? I thought you were going to introduce me. No, so, you so, thank you so much, Tom. I'm Rob Boyd. My Twitter handle is Rob Boyd. R-O-B-B-B-O-Y-D, three B's in a row. You can find me blogging at explainnerds1n.net. Right. I'm Carl Fugate. You can find me on Twitter at Carl Fugate, and I blog at sdpackets.net. Okay, my name is Faisal Khan, and my Twitter handle is M, uh, 8M Faisal K, M F A I S A L K, and I also blog at telcocloudbridge.com. All right. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. I want to get into the premise of today's episode. So by now, everyone's familiar with software-defined wide area networking, SD-WAN. It's a technology that kind of grew out of the SDN space and is basically a way to put concrete technology examples to this nebulous thing that's around software. And one of the things that's come out of it is the idea that you can use commodity broadband internet links in place of more expensive leased MPLS circuits. And there's a huge debate that goes on because some people are saying, well, you can just get rid of MPLS completely and rely on the public internet. And there are other people that say, MPLS has its advantages. So the premise for today's episode is that commodity internet links are inferior to traditional MPLS. Now, Rob's already making a face, <laughs> so I want to start with you, but I also want to make sure that I get the perspective of everybody else. Well, I, I first start off, I think, I do not think that they're inferior because I think that there's a, there's a wealth of connectivity options when it comes to getting access to the internet. And so I'm assuming a little bit of ubiquity, and I, and I know that there's a lot of different situations where we may not have that. But in general, I think you can, this is one of those situations that we've always kind of talked about where we can throw bandwidth at a problem. And so I feel like uh, we have the ability to, um, uh, to not only connect easily, but we have the ability to now, because of the, the cost differences, it becomes much more feasible to provide redundant uh, connectivity that we can balance between or that we can at least fail over to. I think those opportunities make it um, more accessible to most. And, and the price point begins to make it much more attractive. Yep. Carl? Yeah, so I think, you know, this, this discussion is it's very interesting. And, and I think there's a lot of really good points on, on both sides. And I think for, for a lot of customers, it depends. They're going to have kind of some case-by-case, -case, um, you know, circumstances that may change this. But I also think when you add in SD-WAN to the mix, uh, sometimes you get where the the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Um, as you're able to add, you know, more types of, of links, and you're able to balance those and actually have uh, the ability to use them all at the same time, um, be able to monitor them in real time. The 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 end result that we get is not the same as we would have in the in a traditional WAN today. So the interesting thing is, is that this conversation really only comes up because we have these edge boxes that have a lot more intelligence, that have a lot of software-driven features that can approximate the kind of uh, reliability that we see in a traditional lease circuit. Now, Faisal, you work in a service provider, so you have a completely different perspective on this from the other side of the pipe. What do you think about this? Is this a situation that, that works for you? Okay, so what we have seen actually is that the demand for MPLS is decreasing actually, and the, of course the demand for SD-WAN is increasing. And one of the reasons is that the internet is the new WAN, basically, you know. Internet is everywhere, you know. And we see that our customers are now asking more and more about the internet. Not, so reliability is one factor, but the other factor is that our customers, whenever they want to bring up new offices, they cannot wait for the MPLS, basically, you know, mm -hmm. because the MPLS will take weeks, months, basically, and internet is everywhere, so they can bring up the new office on LTE or broadband much easily, you know, overnight. So we see now the customers are, insist are insisting for SD-WAN, even though the reliability is not that much, okay, but then, you know, they can wait for the MPLS to come over, you know, with perhaps little bandwidth, so the, the demand or the bandwidth demand is decreasing, 
at the same time, we see that the internet demand is increasing because of the SD-WAN. So that's a very interesting point that you bring up. So when we look at traditional broadband circuits, so anybody that orders like a cable modem or DSL, they already have pop in place in a local area. So I can have a cable connection delivered to a building inside of a week. MPLS typically takes a lot longer to build out, and part of that is because there's a lot more infrastructure involved. And when we say infrastructure in IT, we spell it with lots of dollar signs. So one of the other reasons that MPLS is considered to be superior is because it's reassuringly expensive, which means I'm paying for something that I guarantee you it's going to work. I have an SLA. Do we feel like that the SLA and the additional cost of the MPLS is kind of a, a good thing? Uh, Carl, you're already laughing, so. Yeah, so, so SLAs are really <laughs> an interesting you know, thing. It's, you know, uh, it's paying for an insurance policy that, uh, it's like covering a, a million dollar you know, painting with a hundred dollar insurance policy. Because at the end of the day, uh, the SLA, even if, even if the, the painting burns up, you only get a hundred dollars out of it. And that's what SLAs are to businesses. I, I might have a million dollars worth of impact to my business and it's like, okay, I got a credit for two months of service, you know, that yeah. cost me a couple thousand dollars. I mean, it, it, that that really I don't think is is the, the argument to, to make in, in favor of it. Well, like what's the credit? What's the, the credit card that always had to add the priceless? You know, with the emphasis being is that, well, if your business stops, it's really not about a dollar amount that's going to make that okay anymore, right. right? And so the dollar amount has to be enough to where, well, is the provider putting enough skin in the game to where I've got the redundancy or the availability kind of guaranteed from a, I can prove this perspective? Because with MPLS, I still think there's, until you get into the cloud also, you're still at risk of uh, some, some issues with that last mile, right? Comp comp and I can, sorry, go ahead. Uh, I, I was going to say I completely agree. And I think this is, it's not a one size fits all. Um, you're going to have, you have businesses that are cloud native. You know, you have companies today that have never had MPLS. They're, all of their services are in the cloud. Doesn't make any sense for them to have MPLS. It, it makes sense to be, you know, completely using public WAN services. Um, there are other cases where you have applications um, that your business cannot function if that's that's not there. And so you don't want to be at the risk of a DDoS attack or a BGP hijack that might take down a portion of the internet. Um, those. Not to say that MPLS providers never have a problem, but those problems are not going to, to typically happen to service providers. Okay, so talking about the SLA, there's another point which we are missing basically is that, okay, so we cannot provide a predictable SLA to our customers, but what we can do is to provide them analytics. And if we are connecting the two sites with the internet, I can show them the latency, I can show them the packet loss, which was not possible before. Mm -hmm. So the visibility is more, you know, even if the SLA is not there, the customer can see that if my link is over the LTE or a cable modem, which one is better than the other. This was not possible. So, you know, the trust level is increasing, you know, which was not there before. But you're yeah. saying that's with MPLS or you're saying... No, no, with, with the, the, with the, internet, with the internet, right? yes. Okay. Yeah. But, but that's yeah. actually a good point that, that yeah. Faisal brings up is that historically we haven't been able to create reliability on commodity networks because if it goes down you're paying for what you get yeah. but we can provide you know maybe the broadband link is up 98.5 percent of the time which inside of what you want is perfectly acceptable and especially if you're running some kind of an LTE backup to cover that one and a half percent whereas now that I have analytics on leased lines so if I have an MPLS circuit running in there I can provide analytics back to my provider to say, hey, remember that line that you sold me that's 99.99% .99 available? Yeah. Turns out it's only 97% available, and I either want a refund or I want to negotiate a lower cost because you're not providing me the service you claimed you were. But now instead of me doing it in the middle of a heated negotiation about why I lost a million dollars worth of business on Black Friday, Data. I can do it at a time that's most convenient for me when cooler heads prevail. So does the analytics side of SD-WAN equate those two links? Does the fact that software has dragged broadband up out of the swamp mm -hmm. give us basically a level playing field? And does that kind of analytics thing actually make MPLS more valuable for the very reason that now I actually have numbers on it? Yeah, in a sense, yes, because now the, uh, you know, even with the MPLS, you know, the uh, the SD-WAN beauty of providing the analytics was not there, you know, in the pre-SD-WAN era. So, of course, with the 
with the reports that I am giving to him in a way that he has now a portal where the customer can access, can see the analytics on the MPLS or the internet. It gives him more assurance and more reasons basically, you know, that okay, I'm getting, if not the same 99.99, I'm getting a little less, but with a cost which is quite cheaper. So why not I go ahead, you know, with the more of the SD-WAN rather than the MPLS, you know? Well, I, I tend to think, I, I, I'm seeing a lot happen in terms of we do have a reduction in the use of MPLS, but we have a increasing reliance on using the public internet and as trust is going up. To me, I think analytics <laughs> argues the opposite in the sense that I've got these analytics so that I know that I made my investment choice perhaps more in the internet-based direction uh, better, and then because of that reduced cost, it's now more reasonable for me to bring in something redundant that I wouldn't have done before, but maybe if I'm a little bit nervous, especially in certain locations and with certain traffic types, I've still got MPLS either for certain traffic types or, or something I'm going to have pick up on because maybe we're, you know, we're dipping uh, in ability for whatever reason on the internet connectivity. I think that there's this, you know, we always have this mantra, trust but verify. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what analytics, you know, brings to the table for us that we really haven't had in the past. The democratization. I the democratization, yeah. absolutely. And so if, if I have, you know, the ability to, to take, you know, multiple broadband circuits in, I can take an LTE connection and I can take my MPLS in, you know, what you're, what you're going to find in some cases, uh, I've actually run into this, you know, myself with, with customers uh, before where there's some sites where it didn't matter if I had an MPLS circuit and a broadband circuit or even a cellular circuit, the last mile out of that town was all running on the same, on the same fiber. <laughs> yeah. um, Good thing to know. Exactly. In that town before and, that happens. And I think that's where, that's that's where the beauty of, of SD-WAN comes in. I can bring in a bunch of providers. I can, I'll have the analytics, I have the data when things go wrong. And then I can value, I can easily evaluate and incorporate other, other circuits in. I can change it out. If you're, if you're having the same outage uh, uh, when I have a, an MPLS outage, I'll bring somebody else in who says that they have another path and I can test that. Um, so again, that analytics piece really plays into uh, the, the long-term uh, stability of the network. So another thing you know I want to bring to the table is basically now the uh, the services uh, location of the services have uh, basically changed you know so now no more you have a single data center where all your services are going now the services are in the cloud good point and the cloud can be anywhere basically so the best way to reach the clouds is the internet mm -hmm. because the MPLS give you directional it takes you to the data center but perhaps your services are not in the data center. So naturally, it's an evolution, you know, that the WAN has to move towards, you know, the, the SD-WAN because the internet is the best way for you to reach the clouds. All right, so it's time for the big question. I mean, we've, I feel like we've kind of reached a point where the premise of this episode, eh, at the very least, commodity broadband is as good as MPLS and maybe even better in some cases when you factor in things like cost. But the big, the, the million dollar question for service providers, is MPLS going to go away in the next five years? Faisal? My answer would be no, okay. but it will definitely decrease shrink a lot. Okay. Carl? I, I completely agree. Um, I, don't, I don't think that it goes away. There are businesses that are not you know, 100% on cloud. I think even even those that, that do retain their own private data centers are going to use broadband or DIA public WAN services to get to their SaaS services, uh, but I think a lot of them are gonna retain MPLS. I think you're both completely wrong. Actually, I don't, I agree. <laughs> I just wanted to, I feel like we needed more conflict, yeah. but no, I think it's definitely not going away. Um, because it's so embedded and there's definitely a heavy investment in it and um, you know how many technologies do we still have take wireless for example not to get off premise premises the whatever the right <laughs> way to say that is um, but the fact is is there's so many protocols that we're still going to be using for quite some time because well frankly it just doesn't make sense it doesn't even make business sense maybe to go back and do whatever it takes to throw that previous investment away and and uh, and or that investment is fully you know deprecated uh, depreciated, whatever the, God, the terminology is supposed to be. I don't know. Yeah, I agree. It's going to be around for a while. There's still some value there. Just I wouldn't necessarily look at putting it in and relying on it. So I think that that's a really good point to kind of wrap up on is that, you know, 
anytime you hear about an SD-WAN discussion, you know, it, there's only two opposing viewpoints, is that MPLS is going to die or that broadband can never catch up. And I, the reality, as we find out on so many episodes of the on-premise IT roundtable, is somewhere in the middle. You know, as Faisal and, and Rob and Carl have said, MPLS isn't going to go away. But at the same time, it's not going to be the 800-pound gorilla in the service provider market. And if you're watching this episode and you were probably thinking from the outset that the premise was kind of a fallacy, that was the point was to kind of make these folks defend why that was. And you kind of noticed that we got some interesting conversation in there. You know, MPLS is not evil. Um, it's the best that we could do at the time with the technology that we had. But now that we have access to an overlay, which allows us to multiplex traditional broadband and MPLS and 4G LTE, we find that we can create a portion of that reliability and make the other circuit types at the very least equivalent to something that we've always felt maybe wasn't as superior as we wanted it to be. And with that, we'll go ahead and close out this episode. Thank you very much for listening. We always appreciate our audience. Uh, if you want to find the latest episode of this podcast, please make sure that you go to gestaltit.com slash podcast. Uh, that's always where you'll find the latest episode. You can also find us in your favorite podcatching application of choice. Uh, you can find us on iTunes as well. If you're over there in iTunes, please give us a rating. Um, we would really love to hear what you have to say. And by rating us and leaving a review, you will totally be able to let us be found by other people who are interested in the premises that we bring up in every episode. So for myself, Tom Hollingsworth, for the three guests that are here on the table, and for all of the folks who are part of our podcast, we thank you very much and stay tuned for more great premises from Gestalt IT. <laughs>